بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sajjan Abdullah Today I will going to discuss the anemia Okay, so firstly, what is the definition of anemia? It's one of the most common disease What's, It's not disease, it's a complication of disease Okay, so If you want to um, make a definition of anemia, you will discuss the hemoglobin before that. Okay, so what is the hemoglobin? I will make um, RBCs. Okay, so this is the RBCs and there is an protein inside that. It's called the hemoglobin. Okay. So when this hemoglobin sorry. Okay. So here's we have an hemoglobin. This hemoglobin carry the oxygen. Okay. When this amount of hemoglobin decrease, the oxygen will decrease. Okay. So the anemia is one of the most underdiagnosed condition, and it left, uh, if left untreated, it may lead to severe complications. Uh, anemia, it's a reduction in RBC mass to carry the oxygen. Um, if <clears throat> the hemoglobin, it's um, it's the protein that carry the oxygen. Okay, if, the, if this hemoglobin decrease less than 30 in, in males and 12 in females, that will lead to what? Uh, that will lead to problems uh, or the anemia. <clears throat> okay, so the baked cell volume. It's volume of baked RBCs per unit of blood expressed as percentage. Okay, so for example, we have an 44 ml baked RBCs died by 100 ml of blood is equal to 44%. Okay, so the, the hemoglobin, it's grams of hemoglobin died by liter of blood, the mean cap, uh, corpus, corpuscular volume, a measure of the average of RBCs um, and the MCV, it's equal to 10 um, Multiply by HCT. Okay, the uh, mean co uh, corpuscular uh, hemoglobin. Uh, it's a concentration of hemoglobin in a given volume of baked RBCs, and the normal value is from 32 to uh, 36. Okay, so normal rates, uh, uh, RBC uh, morphology. It's characterized by donut shape with the central. One third of the uh, red, uh, red cells being paler or without a hemoglobin. This is assessed by the blood smear. Okay, so there is a special consideration in determining of anemia, like the acute bleeding drop in hemoglobin or HCT may not be shown until the 36 to uh, for, uh, 40 hours of bleed, of acute bleeding. In the pregnancy in the third trimesters, the RBC and the plasma volume are expanded by 25 to 15%. So the labs will show the reduction in hemoglobin and hematocrit often to anemia level. Okay, so the volume depletions here. The patients who are severely volume depleted may not show an anemia until after rehydrated. So what is the symptoms of anemia? And generally, tissue hypoxia, you know that the anemia is a reduction of RBCs to carry the oxygen. So that will lead to an um, hypoxia of the tissue. The patient will suffer from fatigue, muscles cramps, postural dizziness and syncope and exertional dyspnea. It uh, means that the dyspnea during an exercise or stress or the dyspnea at rest then when the patient do nothing. Okay, so 
and we have unbounding pulse sign. It's due to hyperdynamic circulation and we have an confusion also. Anemia, it's rarely disease by itself. It's a manifestation of disease due to genetic or acquired. Okay. So the etiological classification, we classify the anemia according to the cause. Okay. Okay, so it will be due to decrease in RBC production, uh, like the lack of nutrition, like B12, folate, and iron, or bone marrow disorders, like a plastic anemia or bone marrow infiltration and malignancy. Okay, so the firstly is the lack of nutrition. So you know that the RBCs formations need a lot of components like um, iron, folate, B12, erythropoietin, and the bone marrow disorders. You know that the, uh, the bone marrow is the factory of all cell production. So when these factories is infiltrated by malignant cells or when it uh, fails to make any type of cells that will lead to anemia. And increase in RBC destruction is due to inherited or acquired hemolytic anemia. We will discuss it after these slides. Okay, so the blood loss. What we meant by blood loss? It's um, reduced in blood uh, volume inside the vessels due to over bleeding like accident, surgery, and menorrhagia and hematomesis or hemoptysis or epitaxis or occult due to uh, intrinsic bleeding like GIT or urinary tract bleeding. Okay, so the anemia is caused by increase in RBC destruction due to hemolytic anemia can be classified as hemolysis uh, due to intra uh, corpuscular defect or uh, hemolysis due to extra corpuscular defect or hereditary hemolytic disease or acquired hemolytic disease. Okay, or intravascular hemolysis by the blood component or extravascular uh, hemolysis in the spleen. Okay, so according to the morphological classification, we have the microcytic. Uh, when the MCV is less than uh, 18%, um, the iron deficiency anemia re reduced uh, the iron availability, re uh, reduced the heme synthesis, reduced the hemoglobin production like the thalassemia and sideroplastic anemia, this type of anemia when the RBC is unable to use the iron, and lead poisoning, poisoning and anemia of chronic disease, some cases, not all cases. And we have the macrocytic anemia when the mean corpuscular volume is more than 100%. It's like the megaloplastic anemia, vitamin B12 deficiency and folic acid deficiency, and the non-megaloplastic anemia. Okay, we have the third type here is the normocytic anemia. Okay, like the acute post hemorrhagic anemia um, and hemolytic anemia, uh, except the thalassemia and some other type of hemoglobin disorder. And we have the aplastic anemia, pure cell aplasia, and bone marrow infiltration, and endocrine disease like renal failure, liver, and chronic disease and protein malnutrition. So, how you will know that if this is an anemia or not? According to the CBC, you will make an CBC for your patient when your patient come uh, to your clinic and uh, she or he tell you that I have um, and fatigue and failure and other things. Um, you will notice some manifestations. You will ask your patient to do a CBC. So in this CBC, you will notice that the amount of hemoglobin is decreased according if your patient is male or female, then uh, you will show the MCV and MHCV. Uh, if the uh, MCV is decreased you uh, than the normal, you will say it's a microcytic anemia. Then you will go to research uh, to the causes of the microcytic anemia like iron deficiency. Uh, and uh, if, you're, uh, if you notice that the MCV is increased, you will <clears throat> uh, say uh, it's a macrocytic anemia, and you will go to research on the causes of the macrocytic anemia. 
then you have the normal cystic anemia if the MCV is normal and the hemoglobin is decreased. So if the hemoglobin is decreased and the normal RBC is in normal shape at the blood film and in the CBC, you will think about the hemolytic anemia, but not the thalassemia and uh, and uh, thalassemia and sorry, uh, sickle cell anemia. Uh, and if you ha if you show in the CBC there is a uh, decrease in amount of YBC and platelet, also you will think about the bone marrow uh, infiltration disease like um, like uh, leukemia or uh, chronic or acute, or you will think uh, uh, to sorry you will think about the plastic anemia like um, uh, complete destruction of the bone marrow. And uh, you will uh, notice if your patient um, have an uh, endocrine disease like hyperthyroidism or renal failure or liver cell disease, or if he or she have other type of uh, autoimmune disease like systemic labus erythematus. Okay. Now I will going to discuss each anemia and the treatment of anemia. The first one. The iron deficiency anemia, you know that the iron is essential part of hemoglobin because it's co uh, combined with hemoglobin. If there is no iron, that will lead to decrease the amount of hemoglobin productions and the pigmentation of the cells will be pale than the, the usual and the size of the cells will be less than the usual. Okay, so um, before that, the iron must be converted into ferrous state. So it's an MCQ question. You must memorize that. Okay, and it's absorbed from the duodenum and the jejunum. So there is a lot of factors that will increase the absorption, like vitamin C and anemia and the pregnancy in inf uh, and the infant. Uh, and there is a factors that will decrease the iron absorption like the antiacid drugs and T and phytate and phosphate. So you must memorize these things. Okay, so what is the etiology? Indequite dietary intake. You know that there is some female um, love and vegetable and, he, and he, uh, hate any type of uh, meat or uh, chicken. So this type of female have the, this type of anemia. And also in the female, there is some female ha, uh, have a prolonged uh, menstruation, uh, increase the blood loss that will lead to iron deficiency anemia. And if the patient is old age uh, with malabsorption or inflammatory bowel disease, you will think about the um, normocytic <clears throat> So you will think about the iron deficiency anemia. Okay, so or if you notice that your patient is pregnant, you will assess that increase the demand on iron. Okay, so this is the clinical pictures of person. You will notice that there is an fatigue, tiredness, and restless leg syndromes and headache increase the sensitivity sensitivity to cold and um, hair loss depression and fatigue headache uh, exertional dyspnea difficulty to concentrating and there is a rare like the pica um what we meant by pica pica it's mean that the patient uh, want to eat abnormal thing like the ice like the uh, ice stone uh, any things like that and um, glossitis you will know notice that the tongue uh, inflamed and the uh, uh, colinchia like the spoon nail shaped and dysphagia there is some syn uh, syndromes related to this uh, issue like uh, difficulty to swallowing or other okay so how we can treat this type of anemia by oral iron preparations or by intravenous drug according to the patient and according to the availability okay if your patient is normal female and have um, um 
mild type of anemia, you will treat by the oral iron preparations. Um, you will uh, put this information in your mind. The first one is, it's a female, have a normal uh, normal GIT absorption. Uh, it's, uh, she is maybe a pregnant or not. Um, if she have an... Um, uh, <clears throat> and immunological disorders or allergic disorders, you will uh, determine your course or line of treatment. Okay, so the first types here is the oral iron preparation, like the ferrous sulfate. It's common and low cost, um, but it's not strong enough to treat. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have the polysaccharide iron. It's the the best here because it's the once daily dose is similar to twice daily dose of ferrous sulfate and we have an oral iron therapy treatment like it's a, sorry it's a, should be con uh, continued for three to six months um, this will not correct the anemia it's but it will uh, increase the uh, iron storage Okay, so the hemoglobin level, it should be rise into its normal levels uh, from one to th three months. Okay, so what is the side effect? The first one is GIT upset. The patient will have a nausea, vomiting, epigastric pain, abdominal cramps, constipation, or diarrhea, according to the dose. Okay, and if you have a uh, pain, you will give an analgesics or reduce the dose if you have an constipation you will give anti-constipational drugs or diarrhea anti-diuretic drugs with the uh, with the uh, iron treatment okay so uh, other side you have an a dark stool the patient will come to you and tell you i have a dark stool after this type of treatment you must be able to uh, not contribute between the both things. The first one is the uh, iron treatment or GIT bleeding or melina. Okay, so um, you must know that it is from the iron. And the patient will tell you that I have a metallic taste or staining of the taste. Uh, uh, okay, the teeth will be maybe any uh, yellow, yellow in colors. Okay. And the parenteral iron therapy, the indication here, unable to tolerate or absorb the iron. And uh, in case of severe anemia, the hemoglobin is less than seven. Uh, it's not uh, corrected by uh, uh, types of uh, oral iron. So we have two types, the iron dextran complex. Uh, it's intramuscular or intravenous. Uh, it's allergic type and the iron uh, sucrose complex is intravenous only less allergic and it's the best than the dextran okay so firstly before giving the uh, the dextran or sucrose we must be uh, we, we sorry we must be uh, completely know if the patient have allergy or not by what by doing a test for hypersensitivity reaction, and we must, if the if the injection will be dextra, uh, dextran, we must give a deep intramuscular injection to reduce what the pain and the staining around this. So, what is the iron toxicity? We have two types: acute, like accidental in children. Uh, you will notice the manifestation like uh, necrosis. Uh, and inflammation in um, gastric mucosa and shock and acidosis. So how we can treat that by decontaminations uh, plus a drug antidote uh, like um, TV <coughs> diferoxamine and iron chelating agent. Okay, so the other type is the chronic. It's due to hemochromatosis and frequent blood transfusion like the patient with sickle cell anemia or other type of hemolytic anemia okay so iron will deposite in different organ like heart that will lead to uh, cardiac toxicity or liver or pancreas so what is the um, the what is the treatment a uh, ven uh, venosection drug like the 
<coughs> disferoxamine and uh, diferocerox. So now I will discuss the hemolytic anemias. Okay, like the thalassemia, it's an autosomal recessive genetic disorders of indequite production of hemoglobin genetic defect in either alpha or beta chains. So there is an it's a genetic disorders at the first. It's an important question, but it's not uh, sex link. It's uh, autosomal, and Uh, the clinical manifestation will be asymptomatic at the major person. Um, according to if it's a, an alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia, we have a lot of uh, differences. But uh, beta thalassemia, it will be appear in the child in the child uh, after six months. But uh, alpha thalassemia will be from the beginning of the life or from the first month. Okay, um, but it's it's maybe. Um, a lot of, I mean, we we may have a lot of variations according to the gene, the type, the sex, the the amount of affections. Um, it's it's and it's classified into minor, major, and intermittent, and each type have a special uh, treatment. <clears throat> Okay, so the clinical manifestation, uh, as we told, it's asymptomatic and major. Um, life creating may be at in severe cases like the uh, uh, beta thalassemia major and alpha thalassemia major or hydrops fetalis alpha uh, alpha thalassemia major. Uh, here's in hydrops fetalis, the the baby will die at immediately. In. Okay, and we have an splenomegaly. The uh, spleen will become enlarged and the liver will become enlarged in the thighs. Okay, and the sickle cell anemia, we have an abnormal beta chain genes of hemoglobin due to mutation in hemoglobin gene. It's a problem between the both protein, uh, valine, and glutamic acid. Okay. So the RBC here is will be abnormal, rigid. Um, it's uh, take a sickle shape and it will decrease its flexibility. That will uh, risk of various complications. The blood will become uh, viscous and uh, the cells will stuck with other type of cells like neutrophil and platelet that will lead to formation of thrombosis at uh, at other side of the body. Okay, so the spleen will become infarcted and fibrotic, eventually winded up the new drug. Okay, so we have now the hereditary spherocytosis. The RBC membrane is unstable um, due to problem in protein spherine. The cells will be rounded up, making the spherocyte. It's color dark and it's smaller or red cells with no central failure. The big problem, uh, the big problem in this disorder, is that the macrophages in the spleen see these abnormal cells that it will eat it up. Okay, so um, one the uh, clinical manifestation will be jaundice and splenomegaly. The hereditary spherocytosis. Most patients are able to make enough new RBCs to replace the other destroy so most uh, so most the time there is a mild anemia or no anemia at all okay so camigaloplastic anemia it's characterized by large rbcs which are fragile and easily to destroy common forms of megaloplastic anemia it's a vitamin b12 deficiency and folic acid deficiency Okay, so the vitamin B12 deficiency form, uh, formerly known as a pernicious anemia. Why pernicious anemia? Because it's not a peer or it's uh, difficult to become diagnosed. Okay, so <clears throat> the pathophysiology here or the normal physiology at the first, the intrinsic factor is required for copalamine uh, absorption causes of um, Copalamine deficiency, gastric mucosa not secreting intrinsic factors due to GI surgery 
loss of the intrinsic factor secretion, secretion from the gastric mucosal cells with long term of histamine blockers um, um, or atrophy or loss of the gastric mucosa and the nutritional deficiency hereditary defect of copolamine, copolamine utilization. Okay, so you know that the intrinsic factor secreted from the gastric mucosa when this gastric mucosa is affected that will affect the vitamin B12 absorption from the small intestine so and from the stomach. <clears throat> so the clinical manifestation it's like the other type of anemia but it's uh, differ, uh, yani have a lot of differences due to what we have here an um, CNS manifestation like uh, anorexia, like uh, parasthesia of the feet or hands, and dementia. The patient will tell you that I forget a lot of information after studying. So, how we can treat this type of anemia? The pernicious anemia is will be continued for life and gastrectomy will be uh, continued uh, B12 to all life and impair, impaired and GI absorption of B12 with some drugs. Okay, we have an broad spectrum antibodies of peripheral neuropathy, especially in old, elderly or diabetic patients. Okay. So here we must give the diabetic patient P12 for all the life and the elderly patient. So we have the other type here is called an folic acid deficiency. It's um, causes of the megaloplastic anemia it's due to poor dietary intake and drugs that will inhibit the absorption like the hydrophilic reductase or drug that interferes with intestinal absorption and storage of the folic acid like the antileptic and the dehydrofolate radiectase is like the mesotrexate, anti-cancer or antibacterial like trimethoprime. Okay, it must give a routine prophylaxis during pregnancy to reduce the risk of neural tube defect. And alcohol abuse uh, and the hemodialysis. The, the manifestation will be similar to copalamine, copalamine sorry, as we mentioned. Uh, the deficiency is insidious in onset, progress is slowly, absence of neurological problems. So as the note, we must give the B12 with the folic acid together because if we give the folic acid lonely, it will mask the deficiency of vitamin B12. So here we have the erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a uh, drug that describe to patients with chronic renal failure. Uh, it's well, it, as we know that the uh, erythropoietin stimulate the RPCs production um, through decreasing of apoptosis and enhancing division and differentiation of erythroid uh, progenitor cells and bone marrow. Okay, so we can give it by subcutaneous or intravenous. So here we have a lot of adverse effect of this type of drugs that will functional uh, or absolute uh, iron deficiency anemia. Um, the dose dependent, taban, increase of blood pressures, hypersensitive, uh, hypertensive uh, crisis, or uh, increase in a platelet that will lead to thrombosis, flu-like symptoms, and seizures. We must memorize that. It's maybe come at essay questions. And here's we have an hydroxyurea. It's an oral ribonucleotide a reductase inhibitor that can reduce the frequency of painful sickle cell crisis and sickle cell disease. And it will increase the fetal hemoglobin levels that will uh, diluting the abnormal hemoglobin. So the hydroxyurea is important for patient with sickle cell anemia because it will decrease the viscosity of the blood and make an vasodilation due to increase in nitric oxides and it will decrease the uh, stacking of uh, sickle cell with the platelet and with the YBCs. So that will decrease the thrombosis and the decrease of the uh, painful scale crisis. Okay, so I hope that will be benefit for you. Thank you for listening. I hope you will have, if you have any questions, um, 
contact me at my account or my email okay thank you best wishes for you